Today, I want to show you one of the most OP items in RLCraft. And by OP, I don't mean damage, I mean pure utility. And I know a lot of you are probably thinking, no, it's not good because it doesn't work on Lycanites. But that's where the most recent RLCraft update comes in. In the patch notes, Shivaxi says, Lycanite mobs are now affected by crouching and invisibility, properly reducing their target range. This is absolutely game-changing considering Lycanite mobs are a huge pain to deal with for most of the game. However, right after this, it says the following mobs are immune to sneak and invisibility. The Crake, Beholder, Reaper, Banshee, Epion, Grell, Grigori, Joust, Joust Alpha, Lurker, Krusk, Gorger, Serpix, and Triffid. Most of those you don't really need to worry about, but the Reaper, Epion, Grell, Grigori, and Lurker can be somewhat of an issue if you're not sure what you're doing. The Grigori is probably the worst out of all of them, considering its sight range and the fact that you can't really get away from it. Since this new change in the invisibility mechanic, I've done quite a bit of testing to see what exactly we can do with it. To start, let me just break down how this method actually works. The invisibility potion itself reduces mob detection radius to 7% if you're not wearing any armor. This effect increases for every piece of armor you're wearing, so really you just don't want to be wearing any. Sneaking reduces mob detection radius by 80% and stacks with invisibility. And on top of that, the stealth perk in Level Up Reloaded reduces the mob detection radius by up to 50% depending on the level while you're sneaking. But one thing to know is that this radius actually does work differently than invisibility, so mobs that can normally see through the invisibility potion effect are still affected by this perk. You can also use a mob head to reduce the radius of that mob by 50%, but it's really not even worth considering wearing one, since it does count as head armor, so it increases the detection radius of every other mob by 17.5%. Part of what makes this potion so good is that it's super easy to make. All you need is level 8 magic, level 8 building, a brewing stand, nether wart, a golden carrot, a fermented spider eye, and redstone. All of which can be obtained really early, especially considering nether wart and blaze rods can just be found in the overworld. Once you get your first invisibility potion, I would recommend leaving your best gear at home so that you aren't losing anything crazy important if you are actually seen, as it does take some getting used to, but really not that much. You can get pretty close to most enemies without them being able to see you, but I would especially recommend staying away from zombies since by default they have a really high detection radius, and also from any enemies that can see through invisibility, like dragons and all those Lycanites that I previously mentioned. Don't go close to any mob spawners, especially if you're not that used to using the invisibility potion, as mobs can sometimes spawn on you and sometimes one-shot you. It is super useful though if you can manage to mine them, so I would only recommend trying to mine them if you're confident you can get in between the spawns. Try and stay away from infernal mobs, and especially read their potion effects so that you know what kind of infernal mob they are, as some infernal potion effects can see you through invisibility even if the mob can't. And if you ever die, you can use a grave scroll plus your invisibility potion and pretty much always recover your loot no problem. The first of many places I'll mention that this potion is useful is the Nether. In the Nether, only Grells and Grigori can see you through the invisibility. So you can basically just utilize this potion to gather all the ingredients you want, like Syncinocyte and Soul Sand, or even loot Nether Fortresses. I wouldn't recommend staying in for too long though, since you'll overheat really fast, unless you have a potion of heat resistance. The Lost Cities is another area this potion can be greatly utilized, as mentioned in my previous Lost Cities guide, so I would highly recommend checking out that video if you have any interest in race rings. In the end, the only enemy that can see you through invisibility is the Epion, however it's a pretty rare spawn so it's not really that common of a threat. So just watch out for that and you're pretty much good to kill it without any interruption. If you are going to try and kill the Ender Dragon without any armor and going invisible though, I would recommend using a Potion of Flight as well, as at any point that boss can just swoop down and one-shot you. In the overworld, you can use the Invisibility Potion to go through pretty much most world gens. 
Lycanite dungeons are doable, but not very consistent because it's super close quarters sometimes. And mobs tend to just randomly walk into you and one shot you. It is really good loot though if you can make it to the end, and especially if you can like cheese the boss and kill it with a bow because it drops so many heart crystal shards and the loot room at the end can have so many different baubles. Unfortunately though, you still can't loot dragon nests as dragons do see you through invisibility. Roguelikes and doomlikes are, again, at your own risk, but you can get good loot from those, so it could always be worth it. Battle towers are especially easy now because you can just walk up the stairs and mine the spawners and nothing will see you unless it's like a zombie and you walk right next to it. All the loot in the chest is pretty much free too, but I wouldn't recommend going to the top because the golem can still see you and still will react if you try and open the top two floors chests. If you ever get backed into a corner by a zombie that does see you, do anything you can not to hit it because the second you do hit it, all of the other zombies in the tower can see you as well. Finally, one of the most crazy things this potion can do is allow you to mine without any problem. Like, you can literally go underground and mine now. With just a pickaxe, no armor, and none of these mobs can see you. You basically turn the underground into something almost as easy as vanilla Minecraft mining. And if Lycanites do spawn, you can choose to take them one at a time and get some free enderpearls while you're at it. Just make sure that if you do do this, you don't mine in forests, swamps, or defiled lands, as lurkers can spawn in those and they see through invisibility. Like, if you don't try anything else in this video, you have to at least try this once. It is so nice. I mean, he can't even see me. Just look, bro doesn't even know what to do. I've also come up with a way to use the invisibility potion to fight all three Lycanite bosses, but that's a whole lot of information and requires a bit of experience, so I'll cover that topic in separate videos. Let me know what you guys think about this strategy, and if you do try it yourself and find something that I haven't covered, feel free to leave a comment. And for those of you requesting a playthrough, I am working on it, but I like to play hardcore in single player, so it could be a bit. I hope you all find this information as game changing as I have, and once again, thanks for watching. I hope to see you all, or rather, not see you all later.